What could possibly go wrong if one were to dump two million tires into the ocean? That's exactly the question that was asked back in the 1970s, when an ambitious project was conceived by Broward Artificial Reef Inc. This was a time when the world was beginning to truly grapple with the effects of industrialization on our environment. People were searching for innovative ways to turn waste into something beneficial. The idea was quite simple, yet seemingly brilliant. The project aimed to create artificial reefs using the most unlikely of materials. Discarded vehicle tires. These tires, once a symbol of environmental pollution, were about to be given a new lease on life, so to speak. You see, the folks at Broward Artificial Reef Inc. saw potential where others saw waste. They envisioned these tires becoming a thriving underwater haven, a sanctuary for marine life. The tires, they believed, would mimic the complex structures of natural coral reefs, providing ample spaces for fish and other sea creatures to find shelter, feed and breed. The concept was not entirely without merit. After all, artificial reefs had been used successfully in the past, using materials like concrete and old ships. So why not tyres? They were plentiful, readily available, and otherwise destined for landfill. The project was hailed as a win-win situation. Not only would it help to reduce the growing problem of tyre waste, but it would also bolster the local marine ecosystem. As the tyres were sunk into the ocean, they would attract marine life, creating a vibrant underwater community. But as we all know, even the best laid plans can go awry. Despite the initial optimism, there were those who raised valid concerns. Would the tyres stay put? Could they withstand the harsh ocean environment? Would marine life really be attracted to them? And so, with good intentions, the project was set into motion. The sea became a final resting place for two million tyres, but was it the haven we envisioned? In the face of such lofty aspirations, the project began in earnest. Rows upon rows of tyres, stripped of their former purpose, were bundled together, each cluster a potential home for a myriad of marine life. This wasn't just a disposal. It was an ecological endeavour, a bold attempt to breathe life into the depths of the ocean. Imagine, if you will, these bundles of rubber, once humming along the highways, now destined for a silent existence beneath the waves. Stripped of their former purpose, they were to become the foundations of a new underwater world. The process was simple, yet ambitious. The tyres were bound together with heavy-duty straps, forming large, irregular rafts of rubber, each an island in a proposed archipelago of artificial reefs. These man-made islands were then taken out to sea, far from the eyes of the everyday beachgoer. In these deeper waters, away from the sun-drenched shores, they were sunk, descending into the blue abyss. It was a sight to behold, this tyre exodus, a migration from land to sea, from surface to seabed. With each tyre bundle that disappeared beneath the waves, a sense of hope swelled. The project leaders envisioned a flourishing underwater ecosystem, teeming with life. They foresaw schools of fish darting amongst the tyre reefs, coral blooming in vibrant hues, a diverse and thriving community, all thanks to these discarded remnants of human industry. The tyres were left to settle, to become part of the ocean floor, to begin their second life as part of this grand design. They were no longer just tyres, but potential homes, potential breeding grounds, potential ecosystems. It was a marriage of human ingenuity and nature's adaptability. The sea swallowed the two million tyres and all waited for the miracle of life to spring forth. Instead of a bustling marine metropolis, the ocean revealed a different tale. The vision of a thriving underwater city, teeming with marine life amid a forest of tyres, remained just that, a vision. The reality was far from ideal. The tyres, intended to serve as a beacon for marine life, failed to attract even the slightest hint of a community. The ocean's inhabitants seemed to turn a blind eye to these alien structures. No coral attached, no fish swam through the rubber loops. The tyres were silent, empty, and devoid of the life they were meant to foster. Instead of settling in to form stable artificial reefs, the tyres began a journey of their own. Carried away by the currents, they drifted aimlessly across the ocean floor. They became a nomadic fleet of rubber, meandering through the waters with no destination in sight. As they journeyed, the tyres began to break apart. The once sturdy structures crumbled under the relentless assault of the ocean's forces. The fragments, now unchained, caused a new level of havoc. They scraped and bumped against the delicate natural coral reefs, 
causing harm to these vibrant ecosystems. The damage was more than just physical. The drifting tires and their fragments posed a threat to the very balance of the marine environment. They disrupted habitats, damaged the reefs, and introduced a foreign element into the ecosystem. The result was an environmental impact that far outweighed any potential benefits the project might have had. The magnitude of this miscalculation was clear. The project, aimed at enhancing marine life, had instead become a source of significant harm. The ocean, instead of gaining a new city, was now home to a vast and damaging tyre graveyard. From a dream of a flourishing reef, we were left with a drifting, damaging and desolate tyre graveyard. The aftermath of this ambitious project was a stark reminder of the fine balance that exists within our natural world and the care we must take when attempting to intervene. Faced with an environmental disaster, mankind had to step up for the cleanup. In the face of this calamity, the human spirit proved resilient. The aftermath of the Broward Artificial Reef Project saw the dawn of a massive cleanup operation. The colossal task at hand was not just about rectifying a mistake but about restoring the balance of an ecosystem that had been thrown into disarray. The cleanup efforts have been a testament to the power of collective action. A vast array of organizations, from the US military to volunteer groups, have joined hands in this Herculean endeavor. Hundreds of thousands of tires have been hauled up from the ocean floor, each piece being a step towards righting a wrong. Tire by tire, these tireless workers have been chipping away at the monumental task, proving that no disaster is too great for the indomitable human spirit. Yet it's not just about the physical act of removing the tires, it's a process that requires meticulous planning and execution. Each tire removed is a potential hazard averted, each tire removed is a small victory for our marine life. The cleanup project is not just a mission, but a message. It's a message of responsibility, a message of accountability. It's a reminder that every action, no matter how well-intentioned, has consequences. And when those consequences threaten our environment, it is our duty to step up and make amends. This cleanup operation is not just about removing tires. It's about restoring the health of our oceans. It's about safeguarding the future of our planet. It's about sending a clear message. We care, we're responsible, and we're committed to preserving the beauty and richness of our marine life. But remember, the cleanup is far from over. Even as we speak, there are still countless tires lurking beneath the ocean waves, a grim reminder of a project gone awry. The task ahead is daunting, but not impossible. With continued efforts and unwavering commitment, we can hope to restore the balance disrupted by those two million tires. The cleanup continues, a daunting task that serves as a reminder of a well-intentioned yet misguided project. What can we glean from this monumental misstep? In the late 70s, a well-intentioned project in Florida turned into a disaster of unexpected proportions. The idea was simple, innovative, and seemingly beneficial to all, create artificial reefs by sinking two million tires into the ocean. The hope was that these tire reefs would attract marine life, boosting local ecosystems and creating a haven for fish populations. However, the reality was far from the idyllic vision. The tires failed to attract the anticipated marine life. They drifted, broke apart, and caused significant damage to the natural coral reefs. The aftermath was, to put it mildly, catastrophic. Instead of fostering life, the project ended up harming the very ecosystem it aimed to enhance. So, what lessons can we take away from this unintended catastrophe? First and foremost, it underscores the critical importance of conducting thorough environmental impact assessments before embarking on such ambitious projects. While the intentions behind the Tyre Reef project were noble, the lack of comprehensive research and understanding of the potential consequences proved detrimental. Secondly, it highlights the dangers of assuming that human-made solutions will seamlessly integrate into natural ecosystems. Nature is a complex web of interdependent systems, and any attempt to manipulate or augment these systems needs to be done with the utmost caution and respect. Lastly, it reminds us of the resilience of our planet and the importance of our role in its preservation. The cleanup of the tire debris, though slow and painstaking, continues with the aid of the US military and volunteer groups, illustrating the power of collective action towards environmental restoration. In conclusion, the Tire Reef Project serves as a poignant reminder of the potential pitfalls of well-intentioned but poorly executed environmental initiatives. It is a lesson in humility reminding us of the need to approach our interactions with the natural world with respect, caution, and above all, 
knowledge. As we continue to clean up the remnants of this project, we are reminded that good intentions must always be paired with sound science and respect for our environment.